Hey everybody, Dan here for Argo Comics. I am bringing you an indie monster haul. It is a monster haul because this is the amount of books we have, okay? Very sizable chunk. Um, we have 24 hours left in the Kickstarter. We are trying to reach our last stretch goal. Okay, it is Big House Blues, which is a prison for supervillains with superheroes as the corrections officers. And we're also offering Nigel Flood's The Squad, which is a story based on the myths and legends of Ireland with an Irish superhero team produced in Ireland. So you know it's authentic. My book is authentic, as I know corrections officers. So I did get an uh, inside scoop on that. Uh, aside from the uh, uh, prisoners and the prison guards both having powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal man. Um, and our last uh, stretch goal, which we are trying to reach, okay, you will, uh, I guess we're less than $300 away from it now with 24 hours to go, so we're kind of pushing, but we have this uh, tube here that you will get, but what, is, what do we get in the tube? is this canvas painting and this canvas painting okay what we are looking to do is we are looking to reach our stretch goal uh, to have everybody get uh, who's on the variant cover level and beyond the four leaf cl uh, clover uh, variant cover and beyond will get an additional copy of Big Ass Blues with a pulp magazine style cover with Painted art by Bobby Penafiel and uh, dressing and logos by Jerry Judge Hines. Okay, and this canvas painting, it's not uh, just on a piece of paper or something, it's actually a canvas painting, is the original art that was used for that pulp magazine style cover. And through random draw, one backer at that level or above, the uh, four leaf clover and above will be receiving in that tube this original painted uh, artwork that was used for the variant cover, okay? Um, I'd really, of course, love to have that cover see the light of day. I mean, we have this uh, amazing painting done. Um, we have the cover all ready to go, so Really hoping that we can make it uh, there because it is supposed to be a Kickstarter exclusive cover. I mean, if you can see the number of people on those levels and beyond, you know that the numbering is going to be pretty low. You're going to have a real collectible as well as someone's going to have a real collectible in the form of uh, original painted art. Okay, let's get to our... Um, you can see I'm rushing a little bit because we got a lot of indie books. Don't want the video to be forever. Um... Our first indie book here, we have Yeet number 35, okay? Which, although there's a bookmark, it's just for the uh, letters column, so I read most of it. Uh, that's the cover. It's a, it's a Western-themed issue, okay? But even though it's western theme, on the back cover, we have this Mike Royer uh, rendition of Black Fury, which is kind of like the, uh, almost the unofficial mascot of uh, Yeet. Um... And I tell you, uh, this is in newsprint for those who yearn for the good old days of newsprint. Um, we have some color, some black and white. Uh, let's see. Yeah, Mike Beckett. Uh, let's see. Mike uh, Beckett did the uh, uh, pretty much story and art on this one with uh, Nate Bauer uh, helping him out uh, on the story end of it. But he really did uh, some fantastic work. Okay, and I can't go through all the um, credits here for this eat because it is a uh, anthology book. It would uh, take a while. I do want to get to all these other books we have. You can see the second story was in color. And again, just uh, very nicely done. Freeze frame any of these that you uh, want. Um, and I, I tell you, there was a couple pinups by Rob Cox in this one as a Native American. And I think he really did a superb job. Uh, this one story I was able to read through quickly because it had no words, but a nice uh, cartoony uh, style. Um, 
remind me of uh, some of the uh, artists I, I enjoyed in the uh, 80s. Um, let's see. Some more pinups. Here's a pinup by Chris Malgrain of Honoric Comics, who, if you've been watching my indie hauls, I've had his uh, books within uh, Honorix Comics. Again, we had another more cartoony story with, a, I guess, a, the Grim Reaper coming after a cowboy. Um, and this was a pretty nice style as well. It's almost like a combination of a minimalist art style, but with a, a realism to it. Um, so I did enjoy uh, that. Damon Threet did uh, that art and story. Um, yeah, and this was a good story about a mysterious girl. Uh, there goes my bookmark. Let's see. This was another, like I said, Rob Cox uh, pinup. That's uh, very cool. And that other one's very cool as well. Let's see. David Bauer. So he was uh, helped write the uh, other one, the initial story. So he also got in some uh, artwork there. So very cool, and uh, we had actually on the back cover, uh, talking of Black Fury before, we had this like photo rendition of a Black Fury, kind of looks like a movie poster. So that was very cool to see as well. Okay, so Yeet available on uh, Patreon. Look up Yeet, and you will undoubtedly come across Yeet, and uh, you will then enjoy some Yeet. Standard Comics, Sentinels, uh, number 269, okay? Uh, I think, don't try to find uh, number one through probably like 261 uh, or something like that. Um, because you'll be searching uh, long and hard. Uh, but I guess the last, this is maybe the fourth issue, perhaps. I'm not exactly sure, but I have been enjoying it. That's a Mitch Ballard cover. Mitch had done uh, work for me years ago. Actually, okay, July, we're talking 15 years of Argo Comics, and he drew the first cover of the first, uh, the first book I put out with a pinup book to show all the characters, and Mitch Ballard had done that cover 15 years ago. Um, so he's still going strong. Okay, marvelous work by him. Uh, let's see. Well, script is Roy Johnson. He's the driving force behind Sentinels. And art and letters and in the interiors is Fish Lee, who is a very uh, popular artist on uh, Facebook. And uh, I do like uh, his work uh, to a large degree. And I guess uh, Sentinels kind of mixes up some of uh, Roy's uh, own creations with some public domain characters. Uh, I'll give you a, oh, he has a very cool, again, going back to Mitch, very cool double page spread in the middle. Okay. Um, so yeah, you can see, as I said, some of these are his original characters, but within those original characters, I'm forgetting this guy's name uh, right here. He's like a public domain character that I know of. Um, and I know this one's Duke of Darkness. I think this is Phantom X. So peppered within uh, the book of, uh, you know, again, uh, I don't know why I'm thinking like... Where is it? All right here. TNT Todd, maybe? I, uh... I've been reading a good number of public domain, but let's uh, just take a look at Fish Lee's work. Just so you know what you're getting on the interiors. You're getting great interiors as well. Uh, you know, you got that cover by Mitch. You got these uh, uh, pinup by Mitch. But you do have, in addition to that, some really... Uh, Great interior art by Fish Lee. You have a very dynamic boom type of uh, panel there. 
So feast your eyes on that. I think that's actually uh, Wonder Man from, uh, there's a number of uh, iterations of Wonder Man in public domain, and I believe that is one of them. Um, so, yep, looking through it. It's a quality book, standard comics. Go get that. All right, another Kickstarter. That was a Kickstarter. This is a Kickstarter. Um, Broke Down and Four Dead Bodies by Travis Gibb. Okay, and uh, interestingly enough, the artwork, Felix Navarro, uh, Navarro rather, who um, had done work for me years ago, doing, uh, well, it was all collected in the Havoc Patrol it was originally in the Argo Comics Anthology, collected in the Havoc Patrol number one. Um, and then he did uh, actually some uh, pages in Argo 5, uh, number 5, I believe. So uh, Felix, uh, known him for quite a while, does uh, great work. I'll give you a look so you know what you can expect there. Okay, apparently it's by Orange Cone entertainment uh and you might be okay so we have issue one we have issue two and issue three okay so we got all those and there's one kickstarter what's the book about well let's see uh after years of being on the bottom Randy and Denver are finally on their way to being made men. That's in quotation marks. Usually made men, that might be a reference to uh, in the mob. It seems that someone has other plans, though. Oh, it seems like someone has other plans, though. And now a simple drop has them broke down on the side of the road with four dead bodies. Okay, so that's a synopsis that's on the back cover. And, uh... That is uh, what you can expect. I'll give another look at, so let's just take a look at uh, art, uh, Felix's art. Okay, I wanted a little action or something. Okay, so this uh, almost seems like a type of book that might be uh, almost like a movie treatment or something. Um, so we'll have to see if anything develops in that. Now, um, Antarctic Press, okay, uh, some may know that I'm taking part in uh, the uh, Antarctic Press Indie Wars uh, book that's coming out. Uh, deadline is actually tomorrow, but I had my pages in for that. A number of uh, indie creators are jumping on board with that. It was kind of like uh, dreamed up in the time where... Um, not a lot of books were being put out, you know, of course, uh, due to the current crisis. But uh, uh, in that time, Antarctic Press had a Indiegogo where you could choose like five or well, actually six or 12 back issues from them. Um, and I have a lot of books, so I tried to pick six find six that I didn't have so there's what we get um, in actuality though my uh, order came in not knowing that this was a new release so this black hops okay that's the one I got actually in my comics order this is the one that I got from the Indiegogo so looks like someone will get a uh, book out of me because uh, you know now I have doubles so what other books did they have uh, that I chose? Okay, I didn't know if this was particularly my style, but I said, well, let me, from the st story synopsis, V-Card, uh, there's something about your first bite. So I think it's a vampire uh, book. Dog Eaters number six. Planet Comics number one. And I think I looked up my past orders, for, uh, and I had two and three, so somehow I must have missed one. Now I have it. Crimson Scorpion, which I believe I have in Exciting Comics, and I believe they uh, 
just collected it here, but since I was trying to find six I didn't have, even though I had the story, I said, let me just grab uh, that. And then they had this Coraptor, which again, looked interesting. So I gave it a shot. All right, uh, now we go from Indiegogo back to Kickstarter and still in the bag. Okay, this was a book I backed Jaded. Okay. And I saw that it had, uh, it's uh, John Santana writing Jimbo, Jimbo Salgado doing the art. Um, we have Joe Marbulda, Bunny Pasig are also in the creative team. I'm guessing letters. I'm not sure if Jimbo does his own color, so maybe Joe Mar is a colorist. Bunny is a letterer. But uh, Jimbo, very uh, fantastic artist, which uh, kind of sold me on it. I'm not, uh, you know, and of course I love uh, just super teams, which they appear to be at first glance. So overall, it got a backing from me. There's a back cover. Very, very cool. Um, oh, probably some stretch goal stuff here. We got a bookmark and we got a, I guess a uh, photo of a cosplayer as one of the characters in the book and uh, I must have backed a level that gave you another book as well or it was an add-on Everhounds number one okay and this looks the uh, same writer John Santana but we got Michael Oppenheimer on art and Bunny Pasig I guess is again most likely the letterer um, oh, well, let's give a look at what type of art you can expect in Everhounds. Yeah, I think it looks good. Kind of like an Eric Canetti type of style. Again, Jaded, says Jimbo Salgado, which, uh, Try to see if there's any page with a bigger panel to give you a look at what you can expect there. It's kind of a thick trade, so I don't want to bend it open too much. You see it's a good size. It must uh, contain a few of the issues. So, uh, looking forward to uh, getting to that. Another Kickstarter, North, okay. North Book One. Uh, Scott Sawyer Folk. Guess that's the artist Andrew Thomas. I'm guessing it's a letterer. And uh, this had a very good uh, art style as well. Kind of a very realistic painted style to it. Okay. And uh, of course, again, it's, you can see on the cover, it's almost like harkening back to that. Uh, initial Justice Society appearance where they were at a table. So now you have these heroes at this glowing table. Uh, and I think, uh, again, the artwork looks fantastic. Almost in a little bit of a Brett Booth uh, style. But uh, the colors are really gorgeous. So, North, okay. Book one. Uh, okay, we had Another trade, another Kickstarter. Uh, like Father, Like Daughter. Kat Kalamia uh, is now publishing. She had a new Kickstarter. Um, I believe it just ended, though, uh, for Like Father, Like Daughter number six. So this was the trade one to four. And this was uh, number five. So, okay. Uh, and it's a father and daughter superhero. Um, let me get the artist, uh, he's got to be here somewhere, I see Brown is his name, uh, Wayne Brown, colors by David Aravina, letters by John Palmer IV, okay, so that's your creative team there, you can kind of see, uh, 
Oops, what the art style is like. Uh, and I believe, uh, having read uh, some of the earlier issues, it's uh, about the uh, super daughter being estranged from the super father. Okay, so that, uh, and here is the super father right there. Okay, and uh, yeah, I believe uh, this might have been a print for backing uh, two campaigns. So, Cat, who is a part of Comic Frontline, which I'm a part of, uh, she has been uh, doing that uh, a bit with uh, prints, which is a good, you know, I did it once uh, as well. Uh, back both campaigns, get a print with a uh, character from each of our books. Um, all right. Now we continue. Oh, and she publishes uh, that book as uh, Comic Uno. All right. Um, so that's the company name. Uh, this is our regular ordered comics from, uh, like, previews, Psychodrama Illustrated. Okay, we got that. Psychodrama Illustrated number one. Okay. Gilbert Hernandez. Some may know as one of my favorite creators from one of my favorite books, Love and Rockets, okay? So, uh, I gotta make sure that nothing, it's too racy because Love and Rockets is not a kid's book. Uh, it really uh, goes in a, a lot of different directions. I mean, it's kind of like what I guess people call them slice of life these days. Um, And I'll just show, okay, of all the pages, this is a character, uh, it's either Luba or her daughter who, he draws, you know, uh, rather uh, uh, buxom, but that is not the whole point of the uh, book. Again, you'd have to really be familiar with the writing. Um, the uh, historian uh, Love and Rockets, uh, Heartbreak Soup, is uh, renowned as uh, one of the best in indie comics, and I will wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, so, if his name is on it, I'm getting it. Psychodrama uh, Illustrated number one is now within my uh, extensive collection. Uh, all right. Uh, Broadsword put out this alternate paths, Raven Hex, which I believe is uh, maybe the, that character in uh, just a different uh, setting. Uh, let's see. I mean, Jim Valent is the creator of... Uh, this whole universe, Tarot is the main book. So the Tarot universe, I guess I'll just say, a Broadsword Comics uh, universe. Um, and they're actually uh, celebrating 20 years. So I'm celebrating 15 years, Broadsword celebrating uh, 20, and he has the uh, number of issues of Tarot to prove that, okay? Jim Balent, formerly artist of Catwoman, Holly Golightly, uh, his uh, partner in crime, and uh, again, Broadsword, uh, I guess 20 years of putting out books, and I have 20 years of fandom of uh, Broadsword. Um, they're uh, up for a little uh, cosplay covers and, you know, different stuff like that that I don't really uh, get into, but uh, I do, I mean, yeah, this one's actually very nice, so you can see that. So fans of that type of stuff, Broadsword's a, a great place uh, to get something like that, and Jim and Holly's work is always uh, remarkable. 
So again, as with uh, Love and Rockets, uh, Tarot, and Jim's books are not going to be for little kids. Um, all right. Uh, okay, I think initially I did a couple of these on Kickstarter. Now they had a general release uh, for White Widow. Okay. And I must have one and three because he has two and four. And I usually check things out before I order. Say Absolute Comics Group. I think it's uh, Jamie Tyndale. Is that the uh, name of the creator who's behind this? Let's see. Yep, Jamie Tyndale, creator. And he does a good amount of the art also. Um, Benny Powell's writer, co-creator. Got Iwan Nazif, Pencil Thinks. Fa uh, Fariza. Comp True and Brian Argyll Main doing colors, Jenna Powell as the editor. Okay, uh, let me take a look here, try to get some of this. Here's a cool superhero y type shot. Yeah, right there. Okay, so I mean, the book has done a lot on the uh, variant cover front and the holofoil type uh, logo here and stuff like that but overall uh, it is a, a cool looking book um, so I kind of just like the art and designs uh, so that's issue two and four I got of those books again it's like a hollow foil type cover going here uh, Dynamite put out, and they put out some great omnibuses, which I've been getting a good amount of their omnibus. This is a uh, Jungle Girl omnibus. I'm a big Frank Cho fan. I think he did a, a good portion of this. Let me flip through. Yes, a lot of uh, Frank Cho, some other people as well. Um, but uh, Jungle Girl is basically like a uh, Shauna the she-devil type character. Um, let's see, here is just your basic, found a good one, pinup style, Frank Chill artwork. Gotta love his work. Um, and these omnibuses are great, especially if you're gonna travel at all. You take that, you have a whole, uh, trips worth of, of reading. Speaking of uh, books that I've read on trips, uh, we got Project Superpowers Volume 3. Okay, this collected some of the uh, mini-series that were later traded. Some of them I even have in trades, so now there's more to, uh, I guess, put on the uh, pile of stuff to get rid of. Um, Death Defying Devil, this has in it. See, it includes four complete graphic novels and more. Death Defying Devil, Masquerade, Meet the Bad Guys, which I know I have, The Owl, Project Superpowers, 2008 Free Comic Book Day Special Edition, and Project Superpowers, Xmas Carol Special. So, Project Superpowers is all public domain characters. We've been talking about public domain characters a little bit. There's probably the most popular public domain character these days, and Dynamite did a great job with him, the Black Terror. Uh, even though he's Skull and Crossbones, not to be confused with Yeats' Black Fury, which I actually did one time um, upon first seeing Black Fury. Uh, and, I mean, they've just been bringing in uh, whatever, I think this is Silver Streak. Okay, another public domain character, a speedster. Um, so they, the art varies here. They're all, it's all great. Um, I think this might be what we just saw in the other book, Duke of Darkness again. That guy with the white skin there. Um, but that's, yeah, painted, uh, here's Black Terror. Er, there you go. So, I read Volume 1 and 2, Omnibuses, so that's a good chunk of reading. Here's Volume 3. Uh, 
I'll be looking forward to get into that. Both those last two omnibuses are from Dynamite. All right. Michelle Fife, who does Copra, had this panorama. I enjoyed Copra. It's been on the past uh, indie halls. Uh, you know, it is... Uh, uh, Copra is tribute characters. Uh, he even says it's a love letter to the, uh, I guess, 70s uh, Ostrander uh, Suicide Squad. So he's kind of unapologetic about that. But he has, uh, of course his own kind of uh, art, modern art style to the book that uh, takes it, you know, to a different direction than you would see in the, uh, in the big two. Um, and I've enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, I actually found it in uh, Brooklyn, uh, at the comic store where the book originated out of. So I found early issues there and uh, eventually moved into the trades and uh, let go of the uh, single issues because that's what I'm mostly doing. As you can see in this haul, mostly uh, trade paperbacks. So this one came out, it's by Dark Horse now instead of uh, the initial uh, company at the comic store in Brooklyn, and uh, yeah, okay. This book, we waited uh, till the end because uh, frankly, I waited for this book, okay? Um, this was another Kickstarter, took quite a while. Uh, Ace Blade, okay, 4WP uh, Productions. I guess, uh, has put this out, um, and it's a superhero tale about this character, Ace Blade, who's pretty cool looking, you know, you gotta say that, okay, and let's see, got a number of pinups, which I do at the back of my book, it's always cool to see Different artist takes on your character. Okay, Danny J. Quick, I know, is the writer of this. Uh, it seems that there's a number of artists uh, who have taken part in this book. Uh, I'll label uh, Danny as the uh, driving force behind the book. And let's see. Give you a look at... Uh, an art page there, some of the artwork. Okay, and with that book, uh, again by 4WP, Lumberjacks. Okay, uh, let's see. So I'm not even sure of uh, but it's a cool looking character. Nice design. I'll go with that. Um, let's see, I think it's a lettering a little small. Um, but oh, there's a very dynamic shot. The Ellen coming through a wall or something. Arg. All right. So we had this uh, book as well. I'm trying to see if there's credits here real quick. Uh, yeah, now, this is created by Morgan Iverson, Colors Inks, Giacomo Guida, no, that's the Pencils and Inks, rather, Colors, David Aravina, Letters by Danny J. Quick, so, and he's the editor-in-chief of that. So, yeah, this book as well, and, uh, again, a lot of indie books, I kind of, you know, did a speed round on a lot of them, kind of get us all through this, um, as I said, 24 hours left in the Thunder Zone Kickstarter for Big House Blues and the Squad. Uh, save yourself a little bit on shipping. We have the past books from Thunder Squad that you can do as add-ons. We have Nature Man number one, Supercross number one, Defenders of Europe number one. They're all within that. 
Uh, I'm going to be doing a live show on Facebook uh, in a few minutes, so I'm going to get going to do that. And keep coming back to Argo Comics for your next indie monster haul.